So good afternoon all. Uh, welcome to the webinar on structural simulation for EV design, optimizing performance, safety, and efficiency. We will begin the session by a br brief introduction of the speaker, Mr. Raghavendra. Raghavendra has over 15 years of industrial experience in engineering consulting, customer support, and technical sales in the area of finite element analysis right, and validation. He worked with Dassault Systems Simulia and MSC Software over a span of 10 years, working with Dassault Systems Simulia brand, built deep expertise in Abacus and broader Simulia product portfolio. Raghavendra holds an MTech in Mechanical Engineering from IIT Bombay and his expertise is in nonlinear FEA, composite and crashworthiness, optimization, light weighting, and nonlinear multiscale material modeling. Welcome, Raghavendra. You all are free to ask questions to our speaker. You can write them down in the chat box and we will address them towards the end of the session. So over to you, Raghavendra. Yeah, thank you, Pranya. For, and, <clears throat> and first of all, uh, um, uh, good afternoon and thank you all the participants. And I really appreciate uh, that you have uh, joined the webinar, especially when we have very busy schedule. Uh, so once again, welcome to our webinar on the structural simulation for uh, electric vehicle design. Okay, so so this is uh, before we start um, this quick uh, introduction of our organization. I represent the YS 3D and this uh, engineering consulting and engineering product company. Uh, YS 3D has a multi multi industry experience, especially in automotive, uh, electric vehicle, and uh, high tech. Uh, oil and gas industries our headquarters in uh, us houston rather than us we have offices in uh, the india mexico canada and uh, our global team uh, consists of more than 200 uh, professional majority are either phds or master from reputed institutes expert in design manufacturing solid uh, mechanics fluid mechanics electromagnetics and uh, as, as a company, we provide, uh, you know, software sales, support training, and engineering uh, services as well. Okay. Uh, so uh, this um, webinar is uh, mainly on uh, electric vehicle. Okay. So when you talk about the electric vehicle, uh, the automotive industry is uh, uh, talking about the electric vehicle, and everybody is, uh, you know, debating on how electric vehicle is going to uh, be part of the life uh, because of the many things, because the operating cost is very, very less and uh, no pollution and so on and so forth. Uh, <clears throat> but the fact is that uh, electric vehicle have been there for a long, long time. Okay, so what is the new that is uh, basically, basically creating a sound in the industry? So the feasibility is of course there, but the viable, uh, the commercial viability is something that people are debating at this point of time. Okay, so what is the difference between electric vehicle and the conventional uh, automotive? Is uh, the only major difference you will find is the source of the energy. Okay, and what is the source of energy in EV? Is the battery. Okay, that distinguishes us. So majority of that want is that you will see in EVs coming because of the battery that is being used. Okay, so instead of uh, burning the petrol or the diesel. Now, um, the old energy is going to come from the battery, okay? And all sorts of the challenges that we have at this point of time for EV is the, you know, range, um, range of the vehicle, okay? And that completely depends on the capacity, energy capacity of the battery. The technology that we have at this point of time is not, um, you know, uh, enough to give the sufficient mileage, okay? And Apart from this, there are a lot of different challenges in terms of the safety. You might have uh, read or heard about the explosion of the battery, you know, and this fatal accidents. And that makes, um, you know, the industry to look into different things. And uh, here as a part of uh, WISE 3D, we provide the Dassault system uh, products. We are Dassault system uh, partners. We uh, provide uh, uh, Dassault system uh, you know, products. So we uh, can provide you the Katia brands and the Simulia brand. Simulia brand consists of many 
software simulation that would help to simulate the injuring physics. So as far as uh, the battery is concerned, um, we can simulate uh, molecular to the vehicle level system and uh, we can simulate uh, the 1D to 3D level uh, for the battery system as well. Okay. So when you talk about the battery system, it primarily consists of the cell. And uh, at this point of time, majority of the battery manufacturer in India, cells is being imported from outside. Okay, but as far as the physics or the tool, our software tool is concerned, we can, you know, uh, help you in a different way. We can help you in electrochemical performance, thermoelectrical uh, losses, thermal management, uh, structural stiffness, durability, safety, and the duration, aging, and uh, many other different physics that we have. Okay. Sorry. Okay, so uh, so this particular here, what we are talking about on the top right hand corner that you see here. Uh, let me just have my pointer. Okay, so here this is um, basically at the pouch cell, and as a part of the physical test, these cells has to be basically tested. You know, there there's an indentation test. It's basically uh, to ensure the safety of the cells. So there's an indenter and this is pushed down and basically try to see how the cell performs. So the same thing you can perform uh, virtually. So the software that we, talk, we are talking about is the fine element analysis, EFD analysis, electromagnetic analysis. So these are the sets of the software tool which will help to validate the structure or the system virtually. What does it really mean is you don't need to really build up your prototype. You can build your virtual model and simulate it and try to see how this is performing, is going to perform. And based on that, you can take a decision, you can make a design changes and uh, you can achieve the objective. So here in this pouch, the model that on the left-hand side, what you see is a quarter symmetric model. So the, this loads and everything is applied and simulated. So what it shows is at time 25 seconds, you can see what is the displacement as time moves on, as you apply more and more load. At time uh, 50 seconds, you can see how much displacement is a three um, mm, and then it moves to 75 uh, uh, seconds, so it's about 3.2 and so on and so forth. So as an, uh, as the load is being applied, you will see displacement, you know. So it's displacing more and more and more and more. So this is basically to check the uh, structural integrity and that is leading to, you know, the chemical, um, you know, the stability to avoid the short circuit events. And uh, this is another set of for the tasks that typically is done, uh, especially for the cell. Here on the left hand side, what you see is a cell, a single cell is a cylindrical cell. So this is what you see is a radial crush and there's an actual crush, three point bending and so on and so forth. So these are a different tests that are basically physically done to ensure the safety and to ensure the strength of these individual cells. So these can be done um, virtually and these are the analysis done in our Abaca software, which is a uh, uh, which is a commercially available fine element analysis tool that's used in most of the OEMs in automotive domain. And this is uh, what the cells um, analysis uh, can be done in Abacus. Now, as we move on at most, most of the time, these cells are actually imported here. And these are cells are basically arranged and joined in a certain series to have this uh, battery modules, okay? And these modules are basically put in, uh, put in the place to make a battery pack. So this complete battery pack is a system which provides the energy which will drive the automotive either two-wheeler or the three-wheeler or the four-wheeler. So this is nothing but uh, energy source, okay? And this is a heart of the entire EV. So when you talk about the modules and the pack, majority of the you know, manufacturer is dealing with the modules or the pack. You basically bring these cells uh, or import it and put in the right um, 
you know sequences put in the make the uh, make the system uh, based on the requirement of the vehicle and these uh, the modules and the pack also have to comply certain you know requirement whether it's a thermomechanical or whether the strength or the stiffness or the durability or the safety so these are a certain thing that are um, uh, conventionally are tested in a physical test the same thing you can validate virtually using our find element analysis software back us so here um the first of all uh, the dynamic characterization are done for these modules so here what you see is you have the battery module and this is natural frequency analysis have been performed that will extract the natural frequencies and there are certain uh, uh, natural frequency requirement of the structure point of view because ultimately this uh, the modules or the pack is going to put in the vehicle and there are certain you know frequency requirement from the vehicle dynamics point of view so if it's not meeting the criteria you need to basically redesign it so in this case so what you see here um, is um, there's enclosures you have and that shows 203 Hertz as a natural frequency and um, to meet this uh, requirement so the uh, natural frequency has to be increased so one way is to uh, you know increase the stiffness so another feature that we have in our software is you can have the beads so what is going to happen is once you have the beads the structural stiffness is going to increase and that's going to improve the natural frequency so this adding this um, um, the beads are automatic feature in our software and that will uh, result into um, higher frequency what you can see here as a 233 hertz with the beads so these are the certain um, the features and capabilities of the software and um, as far as uh, some functionality tests are concerned um, this penetration test is very very important um, because uh, what happens is this will um, assess you the damage due to the impact from the road debris and this will also be a measure of mechanical resistance by um, the obstacle uh, penetrations so what do you see you have certain objects here and that's being pressed against um, the enclosure and what do you see as a you know the close uh, view is how this modules or the cell is going to impact on the cells what is the deformation is there any chance of any kind of damage this is typically um, you know assess in this particular kind of uh, analysis so here you have uh, some animation in the same uh, the impact penetration test uh, you can of course choose the different uh, shapes and the size of um, impactor here um, because those are not fixed as we can run on the uh, road so there could be some stones or the different shapes and the size and there's a possibility that this is going to hit um, from the bottom um, of uh, your battery cells so what do you see here the red color that is basically higher deformation and that basically here you can identify what is going to happen if certain size and the shape of impactor or the debris comes so what is the you know consequences and uh, that way you can qualify your design if it's not um, you know passing that you can improve the design or rerun it again and this is uh, the complete vehicle what do you see in the bottom you have uh, your battery pack is a complete battery pack and uh, here you can choose the different uh, shapes and the sizes that is going to impact and you can uh, qualify for the structural requirement so not only this module but you can have this complete uh, vehicle you can attach this uh, battery and you can have much more realistic more accurate analysis in terms of the stiffness in terms of the, the strength in terms of the safety of the system uh, another uh, very common test is the drop test uh, these scenario represents actually you know uh, what if uh, your battery modules or the battery packs are actually uh, if, if it fall down is there any damage is there any chances of uh, you know uh, the fatal accident what happens is let's say you know it, it drops and there's certain damage once you and then you put it in the vehicle and over uh, you know over, over the time there's a possibility of um, 
uh, let's say the short circuit because of these damages. So these different scenarios, if and but scenarios are actually evaluated during the phase of the development. And these are, um, you know, the major areas of the concern um, for the EV at this point of time. So here, uh, this is a result of the such simulation is a certain orientation that you see. You have the floor, you have the battery, battery pack and is being dropped and you can decide the, the height of uh, the drop and based on that you can have the initial velocity that you can apply directly to the pack. Okay, so these are completely non-linear simulation. This is not very easy. So you can see there may be, you know, uh, plenty of different cells and there are modules and then may come into contact. Your structure may go into the plasticity. So all sorts of complexity um, behaviors are there and um, these can be handled very easily and efficiently in our software. Okay. So there's a closer look of uh, such an event of the drop. So you see certain, uh, you know, high deformation. This it is showing actually the plastic strain. Okay, plastic strain is basically nothing but it would tell you uh, what are the permanent deformation that's going to happen once you have these kind of uh, drop in the field. And another set of uh, the test that um, is typically done is the vibrational test. Okay, and uh, these uh, automotive vehicles are you know, subjected to run on the roads and uh, the roads are not uh, always smooth, okay? It may run in the highway, it may run on the countryside, it may run on the, you know, difficult terrain. So the loads coming from the, you know, the uh, road to the tire, to the axle, to the chassis and ultimately to the batteries are has to be analyzed. Those are the vibrational loads. Okay, so what do you see here um, on the bottom left hand side? So this is uh, um, your the load coming onto this uh, the battery uh, battery pack, and that can be applied directly and see how the structure is performing. Okay, what are the consequences of these um, you know varying loads on the structure? And this could be further, um, you know, analyzed for the durability test. What does it mean is, when you apply, once you apply this varying load on this uh, battery, what is the impact of uh, on the battery in terms of uh, the cracking, in terms of the life? So what do you see here? The color contour is basically the life life cycle. Uh, the blue color is a minimum, and the red is uh, the maximum. So blue means this is the minimum life, okay? So these are the anchorage points, what do you see um, near this, uh, the blue color, these are the anchorage points. So force will be transferred through these bolt anchorages and that's how force will be transmitted from here and that's the reason you will see the minimum life. So the possibility of uh, the crack initiation would be higher in this area. And that way, not only the structure performance, but uh, the durability and the life of the structure, wherein you can predict uh, when and after how many cycle, how many hours, the crack may happen. And this is very, very important from the manufacturer point of view. Most of you must be, you know, uh, from either a tier one company or the tier two company who are manufacturing some kind of the systems majority of the system um, for the EV remain same except uh, your um, E-Drive uh, and, uh, and the battery system and the controlling system. The rest of things will remain same. It's the same car. You have the same tire, the same axle, the same chassis. The rest of things are same. The only major differences are the power sources, which is the battery, and this transmission of these power uh, to the axles, this is the the area where in the difference lies. Okay, and the crestworthiness have been basically taken and a very uh, very important role even in India nowadays. And this is very very important, especially the EV, uh, because what happens is at this point of time, uh, we have different chemical formulation for uh, uh, the battery chemistries. And uh, the only biggest biggest challenge is, you know, the energy density. 
higher the energy density of the battery, you will have the smaller pack and it can have a higher range. But at this point of time, you know, the companies are struggling to have uh, the feasible, you know, uh, battery pack that can give you enough mileage, enough, uh, you know, range uh, for the operations. Okay, and uh, another area of the concern is the safety. So right now what we are really um, using is a lithium battery. Lithium is one of the lightest element and uh, the one of the biggest danger of using lithium battery is the uh, possibility of um, you know uh, the fire and these hazard and this uh, event is much more um, you know uh, prominent and possible in case of the crashes so the crash scenario has to be very very uh, uh, you know or diligently uh, need to be studied so here what you should see is the vehicle and this vehicle um, is having this uh, the side impact there's an accident and maybe some other vehicle is hitting this car and this car is coming and you know hitting the pole but what is going to happen in this scenario is uh, the battery pack the area of interest at this point of time is the battery pack what is going to happen you know so you see this battery pack there are modules there the cell what is really going to happen is there any physical damage of these cells which may cause short circuit, which may cause a thermal runaway, and which may cause uh, the imbalance, uh, you know, the power transmission or the heat generation that could be dangerous and it may catch fire. So these are the certain scenarios which are very, very important, uh, which are very, very essential uh, for, um, you know, safety of the electric vehicles. So here I'm just going to uh, show you this one uh, case study and uh, which is a uh, battery crushing. So as far as um, uh, the EV is concerned for each and every component, especially for the battery, there are lots of uh, and the regulations that even in Indian standard, we have international standards. So this particular, uh, we, uh, the case study is for fine element analysis to simulate the crushing of uh, automotive battery as per ISO uh, 12405. And uh, here, uh, this describes the methodology, you know. So here it has to do about uh, the mechanical event of the crushing. So at certain level of the crushing, these battery uh, packs need to be, you know, operating safe. And that's the main objective, okay? So the physically, it has to be tested and the same scenario can be validated virtually. And as you know, the advantage of doing um, uh, digital validation is that, uh, you know, you don't need to go for, let's say the physical um, prototype. Even if you go it's less in number, you will save the time, the resources, your development is much, much faster, okay? So, here the same thing have been simulated virtually and uh, which tells how safe and how it's complying in terms of those standard so here you have uh, these the battery pack and there's a crush wall and this impactor so this battery packs are put here and is pressed against the crush wall with the impactor and um, for certain uh, loads here 100 100 kilonewton load and uh, this need the performance structure performance need to be observed. So in this case, the complete uh, the battery system. This is your the module, and what you see is a cross member here, and the top and the bottom covers. These are the enclosures. So these makes a complete uh, system of um, your battery pack. Okay. And as far as the loads and the boundary condition uh, is concerned, here uh, you have. Um, here uh, you have uh, this rigid wall which is fixed in all degree of freedom. We have the CAD uh, geometry of the battery pack and then we have the impactor and this impactor uh, is fixed other than the, one, uh, the vertical direction. And um, once we have set up the complete uh, find element analysis model, your entire loads and boundary condition, all the scenario have been simulated. 
And in this process, this is um, you know uh, multi iteration process. Once you start with the concept design, you do iteration one, iteration two. So here, what do you see? As we move on, we started with certain initial design. It was simulated. Okay, they were not passing. Again, we added certain stiffeners, you know, to improve the stiffness in certain particular side. And then, and then another design, and keep evolving the design. This is a natural way of, you know, coming up to arrive to the final design. So this is the final design we're in. You see here, and this particular slide shows um, how this battery pack perform in that particular scenario of the crushing. Okay. On right hand side, what do you see as the impactor is crushing it? The load, the load improves and it goes uh, increases and reaches the highest value. And after that, your stiffness goes down. Okay. So this is um, how the structure performs and uh, here the slide talks about uh, the stresses here the stresses and the displacement so and you can animate you can look into all the systems the modules the stiffeners the enclosure to see how these are performing structurally whether it's a safe or not okay, okay so uh, there are different ways you know so the main objective of um, the virtual simulation is that to test certain scenario and try to figure it out that how your product is going to perform in the reality without building the real model. So accuracy is very, very important. Okay, your simulation result has to be basically very close to the physical, otherwise there is no use. Now with this particular slides, um, Abacus uh, has, can, uh, model all different kinds of material or different physics it can model uh, the phenomena very accurately so here uh, you have the steel and by default there's no damage okay now once you add a damage what happens is material damages and it loses the load carrying capacity and that can be seen in this particular curve on the bottom so red one is without damage so it is uh, is going up and with the damage, what happened in the reality? There's once there's a damage, it loses the you know capacity to carry the loads. So we you can have as advanced physics um, in your model to make it much more accurate. That gives you the confidence, and you can take this in based on the result that we produce. Okay. So there's a battery cast. So once we crush, how this is going to deform, and how we are going to make it and another um, um, you know way of um, getting benefit from the engineering is the optimization so not only we need to make sure that all the requirements are met but we need to make sure that the resources which we are applying and utilizing are minimum so the um, we have the you know Tosca as an optimization tool which can actually help you uh, reduce the masses. It will remove the material forever is not required. There are certain um, objectives, there are certain variables, and these variables will be basically, you know, uh, ready to make sure your objectives are met with the objective that you have. So here, to utilize the optimization, on the left-hand side, what you see, you see the crossbars. And these are the uniform crossbars and you can apply this topology of topology optimization and uh, these structure have been basically used to optimize and what you see that certain you know area uh, it has removed the material and this way is going to become lighter and in this case um, about uh, half kg uh, the weight was saved so not only is going to tell you that your safe structure is safe, but it can, it can also help you to the optimize or uh, make it lightweight, more efficient. Okay. And another uh, area of the EV is the thermal management of the battery pack. Okay. When we say the uh, thermal management, the cooling is, is more important. What happens is the heart of the EV is your battery. That's where the entire energy is stored, and that energy flows from I know the battery to your driving system 
in this process what happened the energy because the movement of the electron these are the area where the heat is generated and these heats need to be dissipated okay most of time it is either air cooled or it is a you know uh, the liquid cooled so the battery cooling is very very important in terms of uh, battery thermal management so here um, uh, the CFD compression fluid dynamics simulation have been performed to understand the cooling behavior to um, come out with the right uh, layout and the different parameters so here uh, is a typical uh, yeah, uh, the chart wherein we start with the geometry parameterization and meshing pre-processing and then defining the scenario and running your analysis and then doing a parametric studies and that's how to arrive with the right uh, configuration which uh, which uh, which complies our requirement in terms of the uh, the temperature in terms of uh, removing the heat so here um, as geometry and the parameterization and the meshing activities so parameterized battery shells so is a seamless process from the cat to the meshing is automatic mesh generation especially in our 3d uh, uh, platform that we have and then uh, we can define the scenario so this is your battery pack so you can define the inlet fluid velocity and the temperature what is the ambient temperature what is the outlet pressure and that way you um, and then of course you need to also define the heat generation of the cell because as electron moves from the cell to the circuit you know there's a heat generation so that heat generation you need to define and then you perform the um, CFD analysis so the steady state transient or this transient analysis so it's going to solve how fluid is flowing in this particular enclosure and how much heat is being carried uh, over in this case so this is the once you do analysis you can do the process post process this animation shows how um, the air is flowing around the cells how heat is being carried away and how is the temperature built up what is the maximum temperature what is the profile of the temperature so on and so forth this can be studied and uh, you can work it out with a different configuration which suits your system requirement yeah yeah so this uh, complete animation you have yeah okay so and then you and then you can once you have done it you can uh, move to the parametric studies you can uh, study a different uh, layout here this is the original layout of the cells and this is the tightly packed and this is loosely packed you may have any configuration you can do a virtual simulation you can compare the performance so here what you see is a tightly packed since you don't have much uh, area to flow so the temperature buildup is much more in, in a cell so you see the higher temperature and then the original layout and then you have the loosely packed layout we don't want very packed one but at the same time we also don't want very loose because the space is limited okay and uh, that's the reason you need to have a very optimized layout into that and you can work in this way another area um, in the EV is the electric drive and that makes a different in our conventional uh, IC engine we have a petrol or diesel engine and the combustion happens uh, but in this case we do not have this combustion and that entire IC engine is replaced by the e drive um, but there are a lot of different challenges uh, and these are very high energy density is a very high speed and the thermal management of the, uh, the electric machine is very very important and secondly the gears that you have uh, the gear need to be the compact well lubricated um, and the same time these are entirely covered with the housings so these need to provide the protection it has to be lightweight it should also dissipate the heat and restrict the noise and so on and so forth so this electric drive starts from the your uh, system level uh, design of electric vehicle and then goes to electric drive control system and then come to the uh, concept design and finally a detailed design during this entire process if you apply this uh, the validation virtual validation it, it helps your design process uh, a lot and uh, when you talk about the electric vehicle 
uh, performance. So there are different domains. There are multiple requirements. Uh, it's just not the strength, but you know, the noise and vibration. So what the one of the biggest challenge of the EV is once you replace with the IC engine, there's no, you know, combustion. Uh, you know, there's no combustion. There's no, uh, the noise and vibrations are also also reduced a lot. And then the noise, since your environment is quiet, then a small uh, little noise will also uh, be a disturbing. So noise and the vibrational aspect has to be very um, uh, importantly studied and designed for. Since you have the electric motor, so there is an electromagnetic performance that need to be ensured so that uh, these electric fields does not interfere with your control system that you have. And then since you have the electric um, electromagnetic system, there are heat generation because of it and that heat has to be dissipated. And you have the gear that the lubrication has to be proper. It should reach in all the places. It should be strong enough. It should be durable enough so that warranties are met. And these are some of the things that is uh, uh, need to be studied as far as uh, electric uh, drives are concerned. Okay, so this is a typical uh, the flow chart of the electric drive simulation for noise and vibration. I start with the CAD design, and then it goes to electromagnetic simulation, goes to fine element simulation, and then multi-body simulation, and then you can do acoustic uh, analysis to figure it out. What is the dB level of certain vibration, whether the uh, structure bond, whether it's the air bond, and so on and so forth. Uh, for the thermal management part of it, once you have your design frozen, uh, you specify operating scenarios, you build your system, you execute it, you do a post-processing of the results, okay, and, and then you, um, you know, keep modifying your design till the thermal requirements are met in terms of the temperature, in terms of the heat flow ratio, and so on and so forth. And most importantly, here uh, the biggest uh, um, you know area of concern could be your the gearboxes. Um, these are uh, the major rotating parts, wherein uh, special attention need to be given. And in this case, you can perform the uh, fluid dynamic analysis, uh, define the scenario, you run it, and you see the performance uh, of the lubrication. So here. What do you see? Um, the, our solution that we have uh, is very, very efficient in terms of uh, simulating uh, lubrication of the gear boxes here. Your main objective is to see how these fluids are, how the lubrication is happening, whether it's reaching in all the places wherever required. It should not happen that certain area is dry, is not reaching. So in that case, if it's a dry, the wear and tear will be very, very high, the very high um, you know, heat generation. And this is a very efficient uh, way of looking into the lubrication of uh, uh, the gear boxes. Okay, so uh, with this one, um, I would like to thank you uh, once again for attending webinar, and I hope uh, this was, uh, you know, uh, uh, useful to you. So we are now open to any questions uh, that you may have. And if you have any requirement uh, from the design, the simulation, from a structural side, for CFD side, electromagnetic side, or any PLM. Uh, uh, so please uh, do reach us and we would be happy to help you. And thank you very much once again. Thank you so much, Raghavendra. It was indeed a really good session, throwing light upon how the power of simulation can help optimize the design and performance of EVs. Uh, moving ahead, Raghavendra, we have a few questions from our participants. Uh, so the first one is, uh, which is the solution uh, sequence or tool or a module to calculate life in abacus? Hmm. Okay, so um, there's a good question. Um, normally abacus is uh, used for the, you know, uh, structural uh, validation. And uh, we have, uh, in abacus, you can do the low side for the analysis. But uh, with Abacus, um, uh, we have a tool called FeSafe, and wherein you can do a high cycle fatigue analysis. So FeSafe is typically used for the light estimation for Simulia. Okay. Okay, I hope uh, that answers the question. 
uh, moving on to the next question uh, what are the indian standards that one must take into consideration while designing the battery pack casing yeah um, we have uh, we have the particular standard uh, which uh, uh, which uh, here i have come up uh, that is almost similar to what i have uh, shown you what 100 kilonewton force uh, need to be you know sustained and it should be operational there shouldn't be you know physical damage and so on and so forth yeah but we do have a uh, indian standard for that i don't remember the number um but yeah i can uh, once you uh, please send me an email I, I should be able to help you with that uh great so raghavendra's email id is there on the screen uh, you can definitely get in touch with us if you want more details uh, so moving on, uh, next question: How can software help in passing standard and codes? Okay, yeah. So as um, the previous question, you know, so there are uh, multiple standards, okay, and uh, so there are some may quantified, uh, you know, uh, quantifiable uh, variables. For example, the, let's say the displacement or the forces. So once you do a um, final element analysis or computational fluid dynamic analysis, so you basically um, assess the performance of the structure. Okay. Uh, for example, so this is in a case of the crash scenario, you do a crash analysis and you know, it should not happen to the battery that is crushing and your cells are, you know, kind of bursting so that all the chemicals are leaking it out. So th there are certain in, in this way, uh, you can uh, utilize the simulation to um, identify whether it's passing the uh, standards and the codes. Um, okay, sure. Uh, so next one is how penetration test will help design. Yeah, penetration test uh, meaning you know uh, impact and penetration. So your vehicle is running on the road. And you might have uh, experience that you know some stones come in contact with the tire and basically comes and hit at the bottom of the vehicle. So normally this EV, the bottom of the vehicle, you have the you know uh, this uh, battery pack, and this battery pack uh, need to be you know checked in a certain scenario that should not happen that you know the big stone in a very high velocity comes and hits and the damage your the module battery modules and the cell. So this way is basically directly connected to the safety of your entire system. Okay, um, and I think we have a last question now. Uh, can we perform CFD analysis with software? Um, yes, I mean, um, uh, the Simulia is as a brand of the system which deals with uh, uh, complete, um, you know, simulation. So we have two backers for fine element analysis, we have this FEC for durability analysis. We have the Tosca ISAG for optimization. We have uh, FMK for your uh, CFD analysis. We have uh, Xflow. We have, um, you know, we have the complete solution uh, for uh, for PLM system. Yes. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Raghavendra. Uh, so, uh, if there are any further questions, uh, we can address them since we have time. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, definitely. So please um, reach to us in case any requirement or if you want to discuss with us uh, how we can help you, please do not hesitate. Uh, my email ID is there and um, you will probably get uh, the follow up email. So please do let us know your feedback and uh, thank you very much once again for joining our webinar. Um, uh, sorry to interrupt you, Raghavendra. Uh, just while saying uh, goodbye, we have another question. Um, oh, sure. So yeah. Uh, which are the new competencies or tools developed for electric vehicle point of view apart from traditional FEA and CFD modules? Okay, yeah, um, here if you, um, as far as the Simulia brand is concerned, we have, uh, uh, we can do complete 1D to 3D analysis. We can do molecular to system level analysis. So the molecular dynamics, uh, of the battery can also be actually simulated if we talk about the so system offering we have the bio we wherein you can actually model the the molecules of let's say the lithium and the electrolytes how the lithium ions 
are moving through the electrolytes to cathode and anode so that way the form right formulations are actually you know uh, are formulated so from the molecular to the entire system where you had a complete car and uh, you had the complete car you had the battery uh, pack mounted on it it can be you may test it for the crash you may test it for um, you know uh, random vibration analysis any scenario you can so it is a multi physics uh, multi level analysis can be performed okay i hope this answered your question yeah sure yeah sure uh, so uh, if you need yeah. more information please write to us we would be happy to help you okay thank you so much raghavendra and thank you all for attending this webinar we will see you soon shortly